We see what happened at the um, Black Friday. I thought I'd never, never see a scene like that, that people fight one another to get the best bargain. I thought this is a country of liberty, of freedom, of friendship, of fraternity. And yeah, people were fighting one another to get the best bargain. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think I would ever see anything like that. But that could country. be people who couldn't afford yes. the full price yes. and who were therefore yes. hungry for the cheap price. For the cheap price. Now, why should we create a culture like that? Where's the dignity of what it is to be human? Yesterday, Oxfam talked of the inequality across the world. The 1% who uh, own as much as the rest of the world put together. Yeah, I mean, that I don't think is actually fair. There's a book which came out by Wilkinson and Pickett on the spirit level in 2010. And nearly all the politicians in this country thought it was a good book because it says that e equality is good for all of us. And when there is income inequality, societies are less at ease with each other. Has this been encouraged by the politicians? I mean, do you, do you look at things like non-DOM status, which has been introduced over the last few years? I mean, what, where do you put the blame? I think the blame has come that we've not kept up the firm foundations, which that book is all about. The firm foundations were always freedom, service of God and neighbor, a fraternity and fellowship, and the rule of law. And we've actually tried to think that simply by having a thriving market, automatically all our behaviors will be loving, will be caring. I'm afraid it isn't. So do you fear for the welfare state? I think in the book, I don't want to talk about welfare state. I want to talk about the, you know, the well-being state. How do we create a society that is at ease with itself, where everybody actually has a responsibility for their neighbor? That well-being state, in terms of welfare, I'd rather talk about social insurance, where those who really are half against it, we try and help them. But all of us really believing we're in this together. But at the moment, we're not. Some are in it, and the rest are really not in it. Well, I mean, there are, there's talk, obviously, about reducing the welfare state. Both parties have been talking about reducing the welfare state. They say we can't afford it in an age of austerity. Well, those are political, politi politicians with their political agendas. I just want to go to them even backwards first before I go to any of their policies. What I want to ask, if the role of the state is rolled back, who are the beneficiaries and who are going to be the victims? And why should some people have more money than others and some can't quite even pay their heating, their clothes. You sound a political archbishop. Well, I'm involved in, you see, I cannot be a Christian and not engage in what I call politics. Politics has to do with the deliberation of how we govern ourselves. We're approaching one of the most open and unknown elections. How do you feel? Do you feel optimistic? Well, all I can say is that when the issues are put very clearly, people will vote the way the issues have been met. What, what makes well, that would suggest a very clear outcome. Well, what makes me optimistic is what happened in Scotland. When the issue was very clear, independence or union, people actually did engage in huge, huge numbers because what was at stake is the state of Scotland. Was it going to be independent or be part of the union? That's why I would say to them, please engage politically. Ask all those who are wanting to stand for office, what are the principles on which you are basing your policies? Will they deliver flourishing for all of us? Will they deliver income equality for all of us? Will, will they deliver education for all of us? Will we end up in a society that is at ease with itself, or each person taking for themselves what is important? Archbishop, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. The Archbishop of York talking to me earlier and our fact check team has been digging out the surprising truth about inequality on our website. That's on channel4.com slash news, depending on where that came from.